So what's the difference between a learning management system and a learning record store? Well, just about anything can become a learning management system. Making an LMS and declaring that you've made one is really something you can do of your own volition. Any set of features that helps to manage the learning and development process could be termed an LMS. An LRS, a learning record store, is something more deliberate. To be a learning record store, you must conform to the X API specification for learning record stores. That doesn't mean you can just do a bit of the spec and call yourself an LRS. To be a true learning record store, you must implement every part of the spec. That's really important because the data that you collect today is only valid to the XAPI specification if the LRS checks it correctly. So if you have an LRS or a pseudo LRS or something that's a bit like an LRS and it lets data in that it shouldn't have, there's not a lot you can do about that down the line. So getting a conformant LRS is really important. You may find that the LMS can come with an LRS already inside it. That could be fine and that might be a viable solution for you. But I think that maybe your LRS should be a separate piece of software. And there's three core reasons why. First of all, the technology is quite different. A learning record store has to accept incoming data from lots of different activity providers, from lots of places that are not the LMS. The LMS is typically very used to reporting on things it knows about. So you create a course, a module, a chapter, and then you can report on how many people have done that. But I've never seen an LMS that can report just ad hoc on something that was done on another platform, when a sale has been made in Salesforce, when someone's made a chat on Yammer. How does your LMS know how to report on that? The LRS function would have to be extensive to make that work. So, number one, I think an LMS usually lacks the technology. It would be quite a cutover to have an LRS inside it, unless it truly embedded somebody else's. Number two, I think you've got to think about what's at the center of your learning record store environment. Where should data really sit? Because if you put data into the LMS from lots of different systems, you're suggesting that your source of record is the LMS. I'm not sure that's true. For most people, it tends to be some sort of data warehouse, a data lake, or a learning record store that becomes the single source of record. It seems weird that you would take data from other systems and put it into the LMS to take it out again. It just doesn't strike me as being the center of anybody's architecture. The third reason why you might want your learning record store separate from your LMS goes back to interoperability. It goes back to ensuring that you can maneuver your data from one place to another. For lots of people, transitioning from learning management system to a different learning management system is a huge task. The average seems to be something like five to seven years is the cycle that it takes to replace an LMS. If you trust your learning record store, if you trust your learning data to that same system that you may want to migrate away from in the future, you're going to have a whole heap of problems. The LRS gives us a real opportunity to separate out learning activity data, that historical record of what's gone on, from the system that delivers learning. This can really free up your architecture to mean that your learning record store acts as the central repository, the single source of data, and you can interchange with a new LMS much more frequently and with much greater ease. Remember, if a learning record store adheres to each part of the XAPI specification, if it's conformant, then it will be able to forward that data directly onto another learning record store seamlessly. Transitioning between systems is no longer a big deal in the world of XAPI.